Hi, thanks for stopping by. Uh, if you watched my first video about the inverter repair, uh, I mentioned that I had a second one that uh, failed on me during the same storm as that first one, and here it is. It's a, a, a very cheap uh, Chinese 400 watt. Uh, it was 400 watt uh, from 12 volts, 800 watt peak. Uh, made in China. Construction quality is quite a bit different than that Coleman branded one. Um, it uh, also, I was just having a streak of bad luck with inverters that night. It, it uh, wouldn't do anything when I plugged it in. Just wouldn't power on. Uh, I, I, they're they're super cheap. I think I paid thirty five, forty dollars for it at Northern Tool. Uh, but I've only used it a couple times, and it hasn't been sitting in the chicken house like the other one. So. Grr. Um, let's take it apart and find out what the problem is. Maybe we can fix it. There it is all apart. Uh, you can see there's our DC input, our 12 volt positive and negative hook up there. There's our little fan that's in there. Let me get that out of the way. And there's our our four FETs to run the DC side chopper circuit. Let me give you a little more backstory on this thing. Uh, I had this cable um, with, uh, it's got uh, battery clamps on the other end of it and these, these loop connectors on this end hooked up there. And a, uh, you can see I've got a 15 amp fuse in this little fuse holder right now. Because uh, that's what I had on hand after the 7.5 amp fuse that came with it blew. Uh, discovered that when I hooked it up to my bench supply here for test. Uh, so it blows the fuse right away. And uh, with the 15 amp in there, it, uh, it pegs out my power supply. I don't have a... A current limited power supply. This is a, a ham radio supply, uh, homemade by a, a guy here in Dallas. Uh, I don't know who actually. If anyone does, uh, write me. I'd like to. I'd like to know where he came from. Uh, but it'll it'll put out 15 amps, and this thing, in its present state, it's got some kind of short. Will draw 15 amps from that supply. We don't want that to happen. So. Uh, Let's just probe around and see if we can find the short. Okay, I've got this wired up to my power supply. And uh, just another uh, word of caution here. I've got a 15 amp fuse in there, but a 7.5 amp fuse is what came out of it and blew. Uh, this is a bad idea. Don't do this. I'm um, just using that to demonstrate what's going on and what can happen if you put too big a fuse in there and there's a real problem. So we've got a short in here. It draws way too much current and I'm just going to kick this power supply on just for a second so you can see what happens. Just watch that needle. Bam! Up to 15 amps. Right? Something really wrong in there. So you got a dead short in there somewhere. Left on long enough, either either that bigger fuse would blow, or my wires would melt, or power supply would be damaged. So, just an illustration. Don't do that. These guys, these these FETs right here, these four are uh, CET CEP seventy N O six. These are the most likely suspects for a short like that it's going to draw 15 amps on the on the dc side not necessarily so but most likely it could be the output fets there around the corner or uh some of these other components we've got, we've got uh some rectifier diodes back here on the output side but uh, we'll just start measuring around we'll just measure around and see Here's the data sheet for those field effect transistors, the FETs in the on the DC side of that thing. Um, pretty respectable, 70 amps. 
uh, 13 milliohms resistance through them. Um, pretty pretty beefy and uh, there's the diagram of what it is see it's got a little body diode across it so you can use it with motors and all kinds of things well that is really interesting these uh, those fats are fine and uh, I checked a couple other things those those two uh, capacitors right there there's a uh, there's nothing else here on the DC side uh, a few resistors and this little control board right here uh, but none of that is shorted and I can I can even uh, just check real quick this way by seeing if the, the two DC uh, input terminals are shorted and they're not we've got eight eight meg in there something something else is going on there's the underside of our board and I've uh, measured all around there and there is no short on that board while it's powered off but you turn it on and you betcha there's a short you saw it yourself so weird it appears there's no short on that board until you power it up there's just nothing shorted anywhere on that input side, but you you saw it when I powered it up. It wanted to draw 15 amps out of my power supply. So, uh, could be something is breaking down when you power it up, or the control uh, switcher board, that little module in there that runs those FETs, uh, is, is switching a pair of them on and uh, not turning them off something something burned out in there and it's just keeping those things short of the ground when you power it up so um, I remember a uh, a trick I learned uh, many years ago uh, from a guy I used to work for named Bob Williams I worked as a TV repairman at his shop and he taught me uh, a trick with a light bulb if you've got a circuit like this that seems to short out when power hits it uh, you can you can wire a light bulb in series and this was a hundred and hundred volt circuit so we just used a regular household hundred watt light bulb and uh, what the light bulb does is act like a big resistor uh, when there's a short the, the light bulb will will light up and uh, take all the heat so to speak uh, instead of burning up your board and your circuits and your wires, the, the light bulb just comes on, indicates that there's a short, and uh, you're free to work on the circuit under power without burning anything up. Since this is a 12 volt circuit we've got here, I have this, the, uh, just a little trailer light from the auto parts store. Uh, about seven, seven or eight dollars, it's got a, got a 12 volt, just an automotive light bulb in it. Uh, 55 watts or so uh, at 12 volts we can put that in series with our power supply on the input side power it up safely this thing if you know if we really have a short when under power this thing will come on and uh, then we can observe our circuit under power troubleshoot it from there all right there's our light bulb here's our circuit uh, under test and what we did is uh, connect the negative of our power supply up to the device here's the positive coming out and we'll just jump onto that and into one side of our light bulb it's it's uh, grounded to the body of that housing uh, you could use a bare bulb fixture if you wanted to don't have one uh, have this instead so into the light bulb out of the light bulb and then up to the positive terminal of our device with the problem so now with that thing acting like a, a series load resistor between our shorted device and the power supply 
we can bring up our power supply or just switch our power on and uh, if we have a short still we're gonna see that light come on uh, probably really brightly and we'll also see not anywhere close to 15 amps being drawn from our power supply because uh, the light bulb just uh, you know it sees uh, a 12 volt power supply on one side of it and it sees essentially ground through the short on this thing so the light bulb isn't going to draw any more power from our power supply than what the light bulb would normally draw uh, so let's switch it on and get you zoomed in so you can see our ammeter there uh, two and a half three amps maybe and yep there's our there's our light so now we've got power on we're not setting fire to anything we're not endangering our power supply up there it's happy to do just that and we, our circuit is under power now we can take the time to take some measurements on this thing and find out what's going on okay tried to get you positioned here so that you can see our meter display and uh, our circuit I'm, I'm really looking at these four FET transistors here in the front end uh, if if, uh, if what I think is happening is really happening then something in our control board over here is is switching on and biasing these one of these transistors or two or all of these transistors and shorting you know they, they they go into conduction mode and short the power supply to ground when the thing is powered up so we can you know if we find that that yes these are switched on and holding the 12 volts at ground through the transistors then we can lift up uh, their gate resistors and just start desoldering pins to find out why that is so we power that up all right and our light comes on uh, if you can see it in the frame there our light is indeed on um, so we've got a short so our data sheet says transistors gate drain and source so let's measure the drain and source we're going to measure the voltage drop between the drain and source of these transistors All right, there's one I got 0.68 what? we can see that but it says negative 0.687 let me move that try to get that into the frame so you can really see it just the first transistor I got on to measure here point well negative 0.685 negative we'll move on to another one here negative 0.685 okay so these transistors are are conducting but they're the voltage drop across and what I was looking for was the voltage drop across a FET like that is essentially zero when between drain and source when that thing is turned on we, we should see a voltage drop of zero so this is where our short is happening but um, negative did I get my leads crossed gate drain source no drain is in the middle sources there negative 0.6 volt Whoa. wait a minute All right let me measure from the ground terminal here to the drain 
negative point six, negative point. Oh, wait a second. Oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Negative point six. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. I'm measuring the incoming voltage from the power supply across the input terminals now. Negative. 0.693 huh oh man let's check something I think I just figured this out power off. Disconnect. Disconnect power from this thing. Check our power supply again. Oh. Hope you can see that. 13.7 volts incoming from the power supply, but Sorry, you can't see that at all, can you? Oh, uh, backlight. Negative. 13.71 volts. My power supply is hooked up backwards. <laughs> This is the cable that came with that inverter, but look at this. All right, so there's the part with the, the loop ends and the fuse. Here's the part with the alligator clips, and they have this connector so that they only go one way, but it's the wrong way. These these were not meant to go together. Uh, they got mixed up in my junk box and the cable, the clamps came from something else. And this came from the inverter, so they were... <laughs> they're wired backwards from each other. So when I plug it in, like this, and hook it up, red to positive, black to negative on both ends, <laughs> I, I, I got it hooked up backwards. I got the inverter hooked up backwards with this cable. So, uh, why, why did we see negative 0.6 volts? Well, it was negative because the damn thing was hooked up backwards. Um, it took me a minute to figure out the 0.6 volts, point, almost 0.7 volts voltage drop across the drain source of those transistors, but what does that sound like? 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts? Uh, it sounds like the voltage drop across a diode and there's one right there in every one of those transistors so drain is this is an in channel in channel MOSFET the drain should be hooked up to positive source is hooked up to negative which reverse biases that diode to protect that transistor from spikes from motors but if you hook it up backwards now drain is negative, source is positive. That puts that diode into forward conduction mode. And there's our short with our negative 0.6 volts drop across it. <laughs> that was, uh, oops. However, the light bulb trick works a treat for even as, as dumb as that was. I don't know if you would have found it quite so easily without the light bulb. You can power the circuit up, take some measurements, and look for goofy stuff like that. Now, remember what I said before in that other video about always check the simple stuff first? Well, I didn't do that. Check the integrity of my power cable to see if it might accidentally be reversed backwards and hooked up backwards. So there you go. Always check the simple stuff or it'll bite you. 
Okay, let me show you this now. I've got it wired up. Well, I've got the cable wired up backwards, but now the polarity will be correct. So um, I'm still going through my light bulb so I can show you what happens when you power it up with it, with it wired correctly. We get no light at all. That tells us that we don't have a short anymore. There's no path to ground through this device anymore, so the light bulb does not light. It just sits there and acts like a a, a very small uh, value resistor. So, let's hook it up for real, power it up, see what happens. Okay, there it is. I've got our lamp, test lamp. Uh, we're wired back into the power supply with the polarity correct this time. I've got my power switched on. And we'll switch on the inverter. Oh, uh, another word of caution. Again, this is uh, 125 volts on this end. Don't ever power this thing up and go poking around in there. Uh, another trick the TV guy taught me is if you've got a a chassis open like this and they're working with high voltages or, or just voltages that could kill you like this one can only put one hand at a time in there sit on your other hand put it in your pocket don't put both hands in there at a time uh, reason being if you get bit and current goes through your left hand it's gonna seek a path through your chest through your heart to your right hand if you've got both hands you know if you've got both hands in that circuit so sit on your other one or put it in your pocket and then it'll go through your foot and uh, not through your heart you have a better chance of survival that way if you accidentally get bit so let's power this thing back up hmm It does not power out. Oh, there it goes. Interesting. Okay, there's our light bulb. No, oh, you can see the lamp came on. There you go. All right, it works. I wonder if the switch is bad like it is in that other one. Didn't come on that first time. Hmm. Okay, I'll we'll have to look more at this switch. But it's working. Well, that was a <laughs> That was interesting. I hope you found that interesting, educational, or at least funny. Uh, get you, get you an assortment of bulbs incandescent bulbs like this um, you could also you know if you're working on something uh, a 100 volt 120 volt appliance uh, you could just wire a lamp in across the fuse if it's blowing fuses uh, 12 volts automotive headlights tail lights things like that are, are great for that sort of thing and I'm not sure how long it would have taken to found to have figured out that I had it wired backwards uh, without it uh, that thing's got to be powered up so you can measure uh, voltage drops across those components with it powered up. Pretty cool. Thanks for watching. See you next time.